Hill again. <laughs> and today, um, I'm very happy to have Martin Drew as my guest. Hello, Martin. Hello, thank you for having me, Ms. Lee. It's a pleasure to be here. I seem to remember you uh, when we did the telethon at LTV. I don't think you had this color hair then, did you? No, I've got a bit blonder, <laughs> bringing my youth back. Yes, I, that was a very eventful uh, time. We were all meeting so we could uh, collect all this money for, uh, but it was a telethon. It's for the benefit of LTV. Right. We met a lot of uh, talented people. Oh, it was a great time. I had, a, I had fun being part of the planning process. It was good to be part of that uh, inaugural process and get it off the ground. And uh, I think we all learned a lot by it. I think it went off pretty well. And uh, it was great. Mr. Israelson was good in uh, giving us his time and being our, our lead person. And uh, of course, uh, Lori Wiltshire was a very significant role in that whole uh, oh, situation. I so I think we all played a little key part in it all and pulling it off. Yes. It was yes, a good time, and I met a lot of great people. It's a good experience. Yes, and now uh, you are involved in so many different things. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. You had your own TV show in the past. Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've kind of been involved with LTV a long time, pretty much since it started up, more than 20 years ago now. And uh, I mean, I remember Fraser Doherty back in a little tin trailer over where uh, Timmy Volks used to be, and that's kind of where he started, and it's uh, morphed into this big thing. It's, it's quite impressive that we, we have this in our community. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And uh, that kind of led me into a lot of things. Uh, I stayed around. I used to be a little more of a helper behind the scenes. And then uh, I guess people realized I was a pretty factual person and involved in town government. So they kind of coaxed me to come out and get involved with some shows and eventually get my own show. You were invited to do the show. Yeah, no, it was great. I was glad you called me. I was oh. excited. No, I, I don't mean this show. <laughs> Your own show. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I got involved in two shows, actually. Uh, I started up the Our Town show with a friend of mine, Joe Lafreno, and uh, that was our first uh, way to start speaking out and get involved in town government and just have our opinions. Seems a lot of people have opinions out here, so we just kind of jumped on the bandwagon and uh, figured we'd get ours out there as well. And uh, we had our casual conversations four or five times and tried to be fun with it, and uh, he's pretty much taken that over. He took it a little more into his own activism with his uh, Republican uh, involvement and being a little more political, so he got involved with it that way, which kind of led me to step off to my own show. And uh, I started the Martin Drew Show, and uh, we had some great guests. We had uh, Mr. Jay Schneiderman came around for our first show, gave us his time. It was good to speak to him. And then uh, behind him, we had Bob DeLuca, who was involved with the, the environmental groups out here, group for the South Fork, and he was a good guest. And then uh, we also had Diana Weir came around and gave us her time, gracious as she is. And so you did just a few shows. Yeah, and I finished up basically being involved with uh, the stuff I hope to speak to you about today is uh, the National Bicycle League, who's going to help us get involved in uh, something else here, which, you know, recreation's my heart, so I kind of got involved with the town and the government for that. And uh, uh, it just kept me involved. And uh, through the Long Island Sports Committee, which I'm chairman, we kind of got involved in that and uh, been doing shows about it and trying to keep and our voice out there. what is your part in it? Uh, what well, are you trying to, what do you do to make this happen? Well, I'm just uh, being an advocate for the kids. Um, as you can see here, um, we're glad that like recently, I guess the town's talking about some recreation again at the Springs Fireplace Landfill. and. Uh, Councilman Hamley, as your liaison for those type of activities, was uh, with us on uh, making a, a conceptual plan for my type of kids who like the BMX to be involved in part of the plan. And as you see, they have other things. They have the Little League, some soccer fields, maybe even some slow pitch softball for the women. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of good ideas down there. And uh, of course, we like this one the best because it includes us, which is so a good thing. So what is your part? Do you, you buy the bicycles? No, right now, um, we're just trying to make sure that it happens. And uh, right now, we're advocating for uh, some land from the town. Is preferably that what at a, you're doing? At a, you make phone calls and... Uh, yeah, I, I get so involved with the promoters and the industry people, and we're trying to uh, keep ourselves involved with promoters and sponsors and underwriters because, uh, of course, we have this great television venue to uh, help promote our interests. And uh, you know, a lot of people have varied interests out here, and the town gets behind them, so we just want the town to get finally behind us. And we feel economically it's uh, pretty cheap to pull this off, and uh, it'll probably cost half the amount of money, I think about $50,000 to pull this off, and just this year alone, they're gonna set aside $100,000 just to talk about this. That $100,000 would pay for the creation of my site twice, so 
Well, we'd like to see politics put aside and you know things speed up a little because uh, oh, back in 2004 we had some support from Mrs. Foster and that was in July of 2004. We're almost into July 2006. Well, that's the way things go in politics. Two years have gone by <laughs> and uh, well, we're trying to keep ourselves involved with it, talking about this big comprehensive plan process and we had to identify sites like the Springs landfill is pretty much where this has come about to rest its head. But we were also searching out land at the airport and uh, actually the Montauk landfill and those sorts of things because uh, not only did I advocate for the kids on bicycles, I was an advocate for the kids on motorcycles and uh, to tell you the truth, it's a very touchy issue with the noise making kids and the bikes and it's not a popular topic so uh, we focused mainly on this to see this to fruition to make this happen because mm -hmm. it's very on the quiet side. So. <laughs> well, I find that the more people are involved in a project, the longer it takes. Oh, definitely. To pull it off because everybody has different ideas and said do it my way, you know, my way, my way. I see. And that's why it's prolonged so much. Well, I think it's good to know that they're finally setting the money aside to talk about this uh, space again. Uh, back in the Schneiderman administration, we had advocated for $2 million to be set aside in your capital budget to create some sort of recreation when that process mm -hmm. of capping was completed. And they're about there now. So uh, they're looking at it. It's a good thing. And uh, like you said, uh, Good things come to those who can be patient. So we're being patient, and uh, I spoke with Mr. Hammerly about this, and he says there are some uh, bigger projects in the hopper that he has to pretty much focus on, but uh, we're on his mind. He knows that this is uh, part of the town board's agenda, and uh, he's confident that so how he will continue in that support him? for us. How often do you call him to remind him? Um, I pretty much uh, spoke with the town board at the beginning of the winter season, uh, let them know that uh, we had still interest in this, and as you can see, this plan's dated October 15th, 2003, so it's been in the hopper for a while now. So you didn't talk to them since, uh, since no. the winter, so this is almost summer. No, that's not true. I, I actually ran into <laughs> Mr. Hamley at Town Hall last week, and uh, mm -hmm. we spoke to it briefly, and he basically uh, led me to believe that we're still on his mind, and that he has the Montauk Playhouse and some affordable housing issues that are pretty much pressing oh, it on yes, his table. So uh, the Montauk Playhouse. we're in the middle of the pile. So, uh, so if somebody to get to had us. written up, written you up in one of the newspapers. You showed me something. Yeah, we've uh, we've had good press uh, in a lot of reasons. Uh, the Long Island Sports Committee used to get good press because of the topic and the kids and the stuff we were advocating. Which paper was that? Uh, we've had some good coverage in the Star and the Independent, and uh, most recently we had some good support from the Suffolk Life. Um, the Suffolk mm -hmm. Life I use is a good East End resource when I do my show, and uh, basically they gave us our props for that a, a local man that spoke out through local television was getting involved in government, and uh, we've tried to, to extend our guest list to a lot of people. Uh, some people shy away from my show because I'm a little controversial, but uh, a lot of people readily accepted our invitation and uh, graciously gave us their time in an interview. and. I thought we did well, so uh, I'm proud of myself for doing that. And oh, that's good to hear. You sound very positive. Yeah, it's been a good learning things. experience. Which is good. And uh, well, I'm glad to see that I, you have your own show. It's 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 good. Well, yes, it's uh, it's. I wasn't planning on being a producer. It just happened. I took a course here. Did uh, you take a course as a producer? Yeah, through the years. Yeah. And. Uh, they said, after I finished the course, they said, well, now you're a producer. And I right. said, oh, really? What does that mean? <laughs> said, you could have your own show. I said, really? So I thought about it for a while, and I just started out, and uh, it just mushroomed. I see. Well, I know you were helping behind the scenes. That's how we met, a behind the scenes type yes. of activities. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm psyched for you to see that you're out in front of the camera doing it. It's, it's a great feeling. and. I've learned a lot by it. I met a lot of great people doing this television, and uh, public access is a great venue. So, uh, so you I'll are a local. You're a local fellow. You were yeah. born and bred, raised here in, in in the Hamptons. Well, actually, I'm a Jersey transplant. I was oh, dragged out here when I was three. My fa my father was killed when I was young in New Jersey. Oh. And my grandparents lived out here, had a summer home, so we relocated out here. And I've been out here since I was about three or four. So I've done my whole school out here. And, Seen a lot of changes, good, some bad, mm -hmm. but it's all. So you said you're from uh, New Jersey. So where are your uh, parents from? Uh, well, my mom was a city girl, uh, the Bronx type, <laughs> yes. type of girl, and uh, they're from the city. And like I said, my grandfather had a second uh, home out here and also a small cottage business down by the Maidstone Park Beach. So I've always been down by the beach, always enjoyed the water. So, so. but where is he from? 
Where is he from? Uh, he's actually a, a German native. He moved here from Germany. Uh, a lot of my relatives okay. are still on the other side of the world uh, in Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of my local family is not here. I mean, we're just have you been there? Probably second generation. I'm going there in a couple of weeks, actually, taking a visit to visit some of my uh, cousins the next couple of months. See how the other side of the world does it. Are you corresponding with them? Yeah, yeah. I got an aunt and an uncle. Uh, we're staying in touch, and I'm going to try to visit, have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned a lot, like with these folks. Uh, recently, I wintered in Puerto Rico. I'm living down there in the winters now, and uh, been checking out how the uh, Puerto Rican folks tend to their recreation needs, and I visited a lot of multi-use facilities and kind of wanted to educate myself to how Is you know, they're doing it. Is this a business trip there, or you, uh, you just made it to your home, you bought some property? No, uh, I've recently met a wonderful girl. She's taken my heart, and uh, uh, we've uh, been on the move. She's kind of been down that way, so I've been down that way as well. And uh, I'm trying to keep uh, the candle burning at both ends, my New York life, my Puerto Rico life, and uh, pretty much do the same things down there, getting involved with sports and recreation and learning the, the businesses down there as far as building and real estate. I'm pretty interested in that. That's what I've done in my lifetime is I'm really a builder by trade. So, uh, so you were, you used to be an artist, right? An artist? Yeah, well, your name suggests Martin Drew. No, no, I, I, I guess I have an art, not, you're artistic not interest. Now. You're not drawing now, you, you drew. No, <laughs> uh, the, only, the only art I would perform is a, a mechanical drawing for building a house. That would be my art. Oh. Because years ago, whatever your trade was, they used to give you the name. Did you know that? Oh, I see. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, so that's why I thought you were an artist that you drew to draw. I think I have an <laughs> artist background, an artist mind, but... Oh, uh, it's a long time to explain a Well, joke. plenty of artists out here, so I <laughs> hope that I'd fit right in. Because <laughs> I have, you know, this name of this show is The Play is the Thing. Okay. And uh, mostly I interview uh, local talent. I see. But uh, also artists that, and well, you are talented, obviously, for what you do. Well, thank you. So that's that's why I I always bring in the theater and what you do here. And, right. Uh, well, since we are on the subject, do you go to see any of the shows out here? No, lately I haven't, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be around uh, long enough to take a, a good summer here this year. I'm going abroad to uh, see another side of the world and I'm going to see how the European people treat their recreation. Well, right now Guildhall has, uh, uh, has a show called uh, South Pacific. I interviewed the stars of the show last week. Oh nice, week. excellent. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well there's plenty of celebrities out here. I hope you get your guest list out there to oh. all of them and uh, <laughs> I'd like to see them come around to public television and give us their time and uh, yeah. it's a wonderful asset to the community this whole situation. Uh, it's great. I mean, there's nothing more you can say more than that. It's just a great venue. It's good for us. It's good for everybody. It's a. Uh, it's an art in itself. This is, you know, when way to you express show yourself. that uh, magazine there, what do you have to do? I mean, is that is that the front page because of what you do? No, actually, the, these folks here, are the National Bicycle League, and basically, uh, they're an organization I met while I was in Puerto Rico. They were um, having an event for the folks down there at their uh, lighthouse. So they have a lot of cultural activities that they focus around their lighthouse area and basically uh, they have a lot of open space down there so they brought the uh, the mountain bikers to the town for the day and they had a race and while they were there there was also uh, the guys doing the stunt jumping and the tricks performing for the crowd so the crowd had a little and that's entertainment. that's what you would like to bring over here? Well I, I think, uh, well first of all we need it just for the sheer fact of the recreational purpose for the kids, mm -hmm. but it'll give them a chance once a year to have their type of activity highlighted because we could bring a national quality event to town once a year and mm -hmm. celebrate our track and, uh, you know, promote the sport and have our family day. And, you know, these events turn into a, a reunion of sorts of family and kids and bicycles. It's a, it's a good time. So we're hoping to bring that attitude towards a facility like this that is a focus of the community where everyone can have a good time. Do you time. do any of these things actively? Oh, definitely. Uh, I, I've grown up myself. Uh, BMX as a kid led me into my motorcycle racing. I used to race motocross semi-professionally. Oh, so you didn't say. Uh, I mean, I could sit here and go on all day about the Bridgehampton <laughs> Racetrack facility, which is the biggest loss this community has ever seen as far as recreation goes. It was a 600-acre site. They had cars, motorcycles. And uh, the truth of the matter is the noise uh, killed that facility and uh, I guess the political climate between the owner and 
I guess, promoters of the sport. He needed so many track days and events and they couldn't work it out and now you have another golf course. So uh, that's what happened to my sport, kind of was you quieted a down noisy for golfing. Sport. Yeah, it's a noisy sport, but it's like the folks now who uh, complain about the airport that they enjoyed the benefit of a good purchase because they were close to the airport and got a cheaper piece of land and now those are the folks who complain about the airport and it's the no same worries. thing that happened to the racetrack and uh, for supporters of the airport I, I feel they may end up with the same fate if uh, they don't keep their defenses up and keep this airport alive. Uh, I understand the jets and the helicopters are the real noise makers and uh, but we've had to accept that certain individuals who are wealthy in this community have that luxury of coming in on a private turbo helicopter or a Gulfstream jet and I have to say that if I want to make noise with my motorcycle he needs to make noise with his jet and some other events just consume our town and they're not noisy but they consume our town in other ways so I say live and let live a little and we should all have our good times and uh... Now that's a good way of looking at it. Do you use that airport? Uh, I used to as a younger man. I used to take some uh, flying lessons out of that airport. I've learned to fly out of there. That uh, too? Yeah, I was a small a small airplane operator, I guess, you know, did that for a while. Oh, I thought Tried to train in it a little, when, it was when fun. When you go to Puerto Rico, I thought maybe you were uh, using this airport to go. Just no, no, unfortunately, no. <laughs> no, you have to get up to JFK, get out of here. Oh, so where does this airport go? I mean, the planes from this airport. Uh, well, the stuff we were just doing was training out of this facility uh, to train to learn for your license. I guess you need this, four. In other words, nothing, this uh, airport doesn't have any uh, uh, destination? You don't, they don't take passengers? No, we, we just used to come up here and train. Actually, you can uh, rent a, and a trainer and, and, a, and an instructor, and they'll take you up flying. And we used oh. to put hours in like that. And, I've had my fun here. It's definitely a good facility, but right now we're trying to look at it as a, an entity for the whole community. Uh, right now it's very limitedly used by, I guess, the Pilots Association. There are probably 100 pilots at this airport, and uh, you know, they're heavily represented in their entity. That There's 600 acres here to talk about, and while they have their master plan in discussion, we just feel uh, we were uh, seeking some land at the airport site for the motorcycle kids. And, uh, but like I said, truthfully, it's been a little bit controversial, so uh, they're not too receptive about it, and uh, I doubt they ever will be. So we're trying to steer the boat another direction to get our town board people to recognize that the kids have been here a long time. Our growth has come about where we're a little closer to each other now. There's not a lot of open spaces left, so the noise becomes a problem. So we're trying to get them behind us to uh, help us advocate a program for the kids to get these kids up the island where they do this activity. And, just help them get there, you know, give a kid something to look forward to. Do you have an ex any experience on the sea, in the water? Yeah, I've uh, had some sea time <laughs> with friends, yep. Uh, did a lot of commercial tuna fishing with a friend of mine back in the day. Enjoyed you, that very done well. You've an awful lot of things. Yeah, I like the adventure in life, I mean. Bicycle, airplane, boats. It's a it's, beautiful place we live in, there's a lot to do. Yes, so you said you went fishing. Yeah, tuna fishing was one tuna. of my better memories in life, definitely. When you say tuna fishing, when you go fishing, how do you know that I have to go here to get tuna? I didn't know anything. Oh, I had to go with my captain <laughs> friend, Mike Helm. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, he showed me a lot of great times on the water. And uh, well, he was What one... happens if you catch something else? You, I mean, you said specifically tuna. Well, yeah, he was basically a tuna fisherman, so I've been on a lot of trips like that. And, uh, we actually had a good time. We caught a giant swordfish one time. I know it sounds like a fishing story, but uh, we probably had a 1,200-pound Atlantic blue marlin on for three hours. And uh, you experience that in your life. You realize that you know you're not the only thing on this planet. And so if he, he got away, else, and I was glad. He, he threw it back. No, actually, he got away. Uh, it was just something we had come across on a, on a fishing trip, and uh, it was exciting. And uh, like I said, it's just a fishing story now where. The 1,200-pound fish breaking water two or three times. You see a, a big animal like that leaving, breaching the water. It's just a uh, sight unbeholden to anything else and, until you witness it yourself. And you know, I'm well, glad did I you witnessed it. Well, you pilot a boat? Yes. Uh, I, actually, that was my job when my buddies used to take me along. I was basically uh, <laughs> their uh, extra hand to, so that uh, there's a lot of hours involved in getting a boat out to the fishing grounds and home again. And uh, basically, that was my assistance to... Uh, help them get the boat in and out while they took their downtime. And uh, so you're very many sided. Yeah, I like to think I'm a golf ball, multifaceted. I mean <laughs> a lot of facets to fill yet. Yes. 
you are. And uh, I'm trying to stay in touch with town government and just, uh, I think, uh, through the process, our project here well, will come to light. How come you never light? did any, anything on stage? On stage? Yes. Probably because I'm a little uh, fearful of a crowd like that. I'm not sure that I like to be in a performance environment like that. Maybe yeah. if I got it out of me, I could make that transition, but uh, kind of like the camera I'm a little bit easier. I'm surprised you haven't done it yet. You seem like you like to try everything. Well, maybe in my life I will. Maybe there'll be a part out for me somewhere in the uh, <laughs> yes. next casting call yes. of life. <laughs> That's really amazing. Well, I'm having fun. I mean, So live. what else do you do besides uh, all this? Well, right now I'm just uh, going to take a break for a while now. Like I said, I'm traveling with my girl these days, and uh, we're having our fun. And uh, kind of let this uh, take its time and meander along. I mean, I, I can't force things through the process, so I have to just go along with the flow. And uh, we're staying in touch mm -hmm. with this. Um, I, I'd like to reactivate my interest in affordable housing, another touchy subject out here. I'm a, I'm a building guy by my background, so I try to get involved with the housing issues and uh, bring projects to the town that I think are worthy. And well, how about running for office? Uh, it's been posed to me in a lot of different venues, but uh, I think I'll sit that one out for another decade. You know, just keep my eye on what's going on around here. Maybe as an older man, maybe I'll decide to get back involved in the well, political there are environment. Well, a lot of young men in politics now. That's a new trend. Well, that's, that's unfortunate because uh, a lot of my age group and younger are, are sorely misrepresented in the way things go around here. So it's just, uh, I'm sure on the local level, I hear from a lot of local people, they'd love to see me do it. And they'd vote for me. And they'd tell me good things about, you know, keep it up, Marty. You, you, you keep them in check. And I try to be real and, uh, and honest about the issues. And, you know, a lot of the stuff's political. And some things aren't desired, even though I'd like to have them and be represented in, in a group environment. Uh, I try to treat life like a pizza. I just want my slice of the pie to uh, be representative <laughs> of the whole. And uh, mm -hmm. you live life your way. Others live life their way. And we want to live life our way. And, uh, you have your slice and enjoy it. Please take yours and enjoy it. Just don't make me undo for take my your enjoyment. Piece. Yeah, don't, don't take your piece. <laughs> yeah. So you are going back to Puerto Rico now for a while? No, I probably won't go back there until the fall. Um, there are some I of thought you just said you're going back. You just came to visit. No, I'm here visiting now because I'm taking a trip uh, to Europe. And oh, I'm going to go visit some of my relatives. Europe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I'm going to do that and uh, experience that. I really haven't had a chance to do that in do my lifetime. Do you speak German? Ich sprechen Sie Deutsch nicht gut, but I will uh, <laughs> learn as I go. And I guess they don't speak English. No, I, I think a lot of folks everywhere speak the English. I think uh, it's like anywhere else. I mean, they're, they're respectful of you if you try to speak their language, but I think everyone, uh, they have English as their second language, as their primary language. It could be the Italians mm -hmm. or the French or anybody, but uh, yeah, I think people respect you when you try. Yeah, so when you come back to us here, uh, what, do you, what are you going to do? You're going to do your TV show again? Yeah, I'm going to start up my TV show. I really enjoy it. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to uh, keep myself involved with uh, the bigger scope of things. Maybe not so much the local stuff, but maybe more at a county level and just starting uh, bringing up my guest list to the politicians and the, uh, the people out here who, are, who get involved with their own activism in, in many forms of the environment. Analyst, the recreation crowd. There's, uh, I'd like to see the fishing guys step up and uh, get some uh, activity in their direction for some things. And mm -hmm. you know, the fishing used to be an industry out here, and uh, right now they're considering uh, buying maybe even the Amagansett market and turning it into something. Because I understand it's on the chopping block for sale. And if the town gets involved with it, what will they make of it? And so we'd, we'd what like do you to think see. They're going to make of it. What should they make? Uh, I think they should keep it as it is and uh, keep it as some sort of farmers market. And tr a true Bayman's market would be nice to see uh, the fishing industry recognized in a centrally located spot for the the Bayman to deliver their goods and you know, have their place and a, and a market for their their product. Do you know that there was a demonstration against the war uh, about a couple of weeks ago? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, you were not part of it. No, I'm trying to be apolitical at this point. I mean, uh, we have to deal with who's in charge. And uh, yeah, out here, I, I did some things around the Republicans. And uh, this is a very democratic town. And people tend to get nasty with the politics. It's almost like a, 
it's almost not a good thing to get involved in because uh, people start judging you by your political affiliation. So I, I think well, I'm just going to... Uh, you mentioned you interviewed politicians on you. Yes, yeah. So they have affiliations? Well, uh, of course, I interviewed Jay Schneiderman. He's a Republican, uh, but he was a former supervisor of our town, and I, I wanted him as a, as a guest in that regard because, uh, you know, here's an unknown guy, comes out of nowhere, and... Next thing he's running our town. I think he did a good job. I mean, I know he's affiliated to the Republicans, but uh, I like to stay more as a free-thinking guy, right in the middle. Just uh, keep me in the middle and That's just respect me as a safe. citizen. And yeah. it's safe that way. Well, then I'm not beholden to anyone either and their agendas, so I can just speak, mm -hmm. uh, you know, well, for my if supporters. You, if you're that way, then you can't run for office. What maybe you'll change your mind ten years from that? Well, no, um, I think it'd be mm -hmm. time for a middle-of-the-road guy to get in that front seat and take over the supervisor's position and, and really mm -hmm. bring back a little local connection to the uh, mm -hmm. to the town. Because, uh, like I said, our age group well, people and, and less we're not well represented. So, we well, can just talk would you believe our time is just about up? And you have such a long list here that I didn't even ask you about probably half the things. No, that's basically what I've been involved with, the public television uh -huh. and my recreation uh, interests mm -hmm. and uh, just being part of the process. And like I said, but it's it all been a great very, learning experience for me. very interesting. I, uh, when I met you the first time, I didn't know anything about you except that you wanted to do some camera work and all that. Right, right. I've always volunteered my time for LTV. It's, it's, mm -hmm. I like it. So, uh, so now we have to say goodbye to people. I usually wave. Like okay. Bye. Goodbye out there. See you next time. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. It's been a great speaking to you. It's been a pleasure, and I wish you good luck in all your endeavors. I'll be very satisfied when I see my kids out there pedaling their bikes. So.